alongside playing for Cobb Mayvorian CC on a Saturday, Sudara and a group of his Sri Lankan friends decided to form a Sunday cricket team called Grimsdyke. In their first season in 2021, Grimsdyke won the London Sunday Surrey Championship. However, they disbanded after their first season. Here's Sudara on why that happened. Hello and welcome to Solent Sports News. I'm Alex Worth and I'm joined now by Sudara Panamula, who is a cricket player at Cobham Avorians. Sudara, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, so just start with telling me a little bit more about your background, sort of where did you grow up, stuff like that. Um, yeah, um, thank you for having me. So um, I was born in England, I went to school majority of my years here. Um, in 2007, I moved to Sri Lanka with my family and then spent about four years in Sri Lanka, um, studying there and then came back to England to do my higher studies and then, yeah, went to university, did sports psychology, and here I am. So, Going back to Sri Lanka, that yeah. was the only reason why you went back, just to go and do your studies, right? Um, it was just to go with family, to be honest. My dad always wanted to go back to Sri Lanka, so he thought it would be good for us to spend a few years, you know, get used to our culture, spend time with our own extended family who's all there. Um, and it was great, to be honest, yeah. Perfect. Um, so you're a big activist for, for mental health in sports, especially cricket. Um, how did you get into it? Um, so, to be honest, my interest for mental health and psychology really stemmed from my time at um, sixth form. and then. I've always been into sports since a young child, whether it's football, cricket, tennis, athletics, really played a lot. Um, but it was actually when I went to uni to do sports psychology that I really got invested into psychology, the mental health side of it, um, especially like performance wise, how anxiety kind of affects that. Um, and then what I found was that cricket is a sport where it's a very mental game. It's more mental than I guess a lot of other sports like, like golf as well. So that's where the interest for me in cricket and sports psychology really came in because as an all-rounder myself, I bat and I bowl and I kind of like to put myself in those situations and see how am I going to handle this pressure? How do I handle like the anxiety of walking into bat or like there's a batsman there who's hitting me for sixes, how am I going to calm down my emotions to perform? So that's where it really came from. So sure. so you talk about <coughs> you know mental health and anxiety surrounding about cricket. So uh, a couple of years ago, you broke your finger in a freak cricket accident yeah. um, and it put you out of sports for a long time. Sort of, yeah. How did you cope with being away from, from sport for a while? Yeah, so that was quite difficult. I would say in my sporting career, that was probably my hardest moment. Um, I, but also it was also an opportunity where I could finally put the things that I learned into, into um, action kind of thing on myself. So I used a lot of positive affirmation knowing that this will pass. Um, I did meditate and journal a lot just to keep my feelings in check. Um, and. I kind of I turned to football as well because that was a sport that I could play with my hand kind of casted up and I kind of used that as my outlet just playing football with my friends on my own and um, yeah I just had to kind of just see the positivity about it try to use it as a learning curve it was it was actually during that time where I launched my own sports psychology page because I felt like I could document my own journey of actually having a broken finger and then you know we came back last season and had a really strong season so I feel like I came through it quite well. So. Um Alongside Cobb Mayborens, who's your main sort of cricket team, um, you used to play for a team called uh, Grimsdyke, yep. who unfortunately disbanded last season. Yep. Did, why, why did they disband? Um, so that's an interesting one. So um, obviously, um, we played against each other at, Cobham, um, at Grimsdyke as well, and it was a bunch of Sri Lankan lads, to be honest, a lot of people we thought were family. Um, but I guess it was, it was a bit of a clash of egos um, and a clash of personalities, maybe generational differences where there was a bit of a divide between the older lot and the younger lot and I feel like there came a point where our ideas just couldn't clash and um, unfortunately even though we were prepared to play on um, our captain and the older lot they kind of weren't really seeing eye to eye with us and eventually they just thought it wasn't going to be worth it and I think it was to the benefit of Cobham to be honest we got to give everything to the Ivorians. And just uh, very very briefly um, have you guys thought about getting back together? Um, yeah we tried to like um, you know rekindle the relationships kind of had proper heart to heart but again we just weren't getting on the same page and it just wasn't worth pursuing and just wasting our energy really so yeah so that okay. was it well thank you very much Sid, for your time time to take for a short break now uh, i'll be back in a couple of minutes with more news and interviews to alex worth now at the uh, city field stadium reporting on the mets for us uh, alex how critical an off season is it do you think for the new york mets this year thank you very much john uh, well i believe it is an essentially critical off season for the new york mets who will be looking to build off of a 101 win campaign just the fourth time in their franchise history they've won more than 100 games in a season however almost half of their roster are now free agents so it's going to be 
uh, about making those critical decisions about who those players are to bring back and who they should let go. Uh, Jacob de Grom is the best free agent who used to play for the Mets, I would say. Uh, should they bring him back? Yeah, well, obviously, Jacob de Grom's legacy carries itself. You know, he's arguably the best pitcher uh, in baseball at the moment. So it's no question that he's going to be asking for a lot of money. Similar to the Max Scherzer deal that the Mets gave to him of three years, $130 million. The question for the Mets is, they, is could they put uh, those $40 million into de Grom or could they put those $40 million into two or three impactful players that could make a difference on their roster? Uh, did the Edwin Diaz uh, contract mark a statement of intent for Steve Cohen and, and how do you think the off-season will go? Yeah, well, it was an absolutely critical signing uh, to get Edwin Diaz uh, locked up. They signed him to a five-year, $102 million deal. Uh, Edwin Diaz, the best reliever in baseball at the moment. Uh, everybody in the baseball uh, universe knows that Steve Cohen uh, is the richest owner in baseball at the moment. Um, sure, being rich uh, has, its, uh, has its benefits, but it's going to be about uh, buying smart, not buying recklessly for the New York Mets. Alex Worth.